Hey, my name is Ali. I'm the creator of Cirque Plus, the app that I built with Passion.io. I've been with them for over two years and I'm super happy with the platform. So I'm filming this video today to kind of give you a behind the scenes look at the dashboard and how easy it is to create a course um, with this drag and drop no code app builder. This will be part one in how to create a course in Passion.io and we'll be covering how to create lessons and sequences. Um, in part two, which will be the follow-up, I'll go over how to assign pricing options and the different options there. So I'll be including the link for the passion.io webinar below. There's lots of info there. It is an affiliate link, so just know that if you sign up using my link, I do get a commission. If you do use my link, let me know because I will send you some Canva templates that will really help um, make your banners stand out from when you're making the banners for your courses. I have some great design hacks that I've picked up along the way and put those into a guide, and I'm happy to share that with you if you use my link. Okay, so this is the Passion.io dashboard. When you log in with this credentials, this is the screen that you see. Over here on the left is kind of my navigation bar. Um, and so today I'm just going to be creating a quick program, um, kind of giving an overview of all the widgets available. I'm just showing you really how easy it is to create a course in Passion. All right, so I'm going to click this guy over here, Passion Products down here on courses. And these are all the courses that I have. So to create a new one, we're just gonna hit this plus symbol. I already have um, something created here that's the correct size. So I'm just gonna toss that in there. I'm gonna give it a name. All right, so it's going to give me some options. Um, I've honestly never used any of the, like, templates <laughs> they give. Um, I always just choose a level structure. So I'm going to use a two-level structure. And you can change... Um, the titles like for lecture and day, we'd go up here to the little three dots and just say edit labels. Um, so let's just go ahead and say week for the first one. Let's imagine I'm using, I'm making this course as like a six week challenge. So now these are week one, week two. So maybe in the first week we're kind of outline your act. Okay, and then maybe there's like a series of lessons that kind of walk through that process. So this is just kind of a dummy placeholder lesson that automatically has come up. So if we click that, we can then edit it. And it's as simple as, let me just delete what they already plopped in here. And this is what we're working with. So. Let's just go through and do one of each. Let's start with an image. Let's <laughs> just throw that one in there. Okay, let's see. Maybe we want to throw in a video. Let's see what I have. You can do a video link or a YouTube link. Um, let's see what I already have in here. It's nice that you, if you're using videos over and over again, oh look, they give us some sample ones. That's nice. Um, I have this one. You can throw that guy in. And like I'm just throwing stuff in here just to give you an example. Text. So maybe that's a tutorial, so I could say tutorial. There's not a whole lot of editing features, but I mean, we can make headings. <laughs> not a lot there. Um, try this tutorial. Um, let's see. And let's see what other editing options. We can italicize, underline. You can make something a link to um, something else. I think there's a bullet point. Um, so something that I've done which is kind of interesting is I I reference other content within my app. So it's like 
I might do this one and say, if you liked this, try this one too. And then what I can do is make this a link. And when I, so to get a link that I'd want, let me just see, I'd actually have to go into my subdomain. I'm just grabbing something. So I'm going to one of my other lessons that I already have published. Okay. Um, and then I grab the URL, copy, come back here and paste it. Okay, so that's a, a nice way to kind of reference other content within your app. Okay, so that's a little trick that I've done. Um, if you have like a PDF guide, we can add that too. Where'd that go? And yeah, there it goes. Um, so I just have this one. Just literally dragging random things from my desktop. So when you put in a guide, it just kind of creates a download link at the bottom. Let's see, what else do we have? Stopwatch, I've never actually used this feature. <laughs> um, but I guess if you wanted to time yourself doing something, that would be cool. Um, you only allowed one of those. Okay, so the type form is an interesting thing we can add into this lesson. Um, so I already have, where is it, a type form quiz already made. I'm just grabbing the share link. And I'll actually embed this form within my app, which is cool. So the way that I've used this is like at the end of a lesson, I have a little pop quiz and it's like to kind of, this is my inside seatbelt pop quiz this is like a piece of choreography. So within this quiz, um, let me just grab it. And if you haven't used Typeform before, it's great. Um, yeah, it has a lot of neat stuff. Okay, so here I'm just going to throw this in. This is optional if you want people to like be able to get the check mark for finishing the lesson. Uh, whatever. Did that work? Let me see. Yeah, submit. We'll see if that worked in just a second. There it goes. Alright, so you can see it just showed up there. What else haven't we used? Okay, we'll use an audio widget. And it has to be either these extensions, the .aac or .mp3. The one, I did a voice record on my iPhone and it defaults to the M4A. So I'm gonna really quickly use my converter, which I always use, um, let me just pull this over from my other screen, the Wondershare Uni Converter. It's super fast, super easy. I actually don't have an affiliate link with them, but it's just awesome. It consistently just makes converting files. Uh, no, I don't wanna do that now. Um, easy. <laughs> so I just grabbed a random audio of my daughter singing the ABCs. All right, so we're just going to really quickly convert this to an MP3. All you have to do is hit convert. And that's amazing. It'll go to your converted files, which we can just open by clicking that little guy. And now that's open on my other screen. And I'm doing all these um, pretty quickly. <laughs> like obviously this isn't how you'd actually just throw together a course, this with random stuff. But I'm just showing you all 
the different widgets. And then once this is all upload, I'll publish it and then I'll open it in my subdomain and also in the app itself to show you what it looks like from the user end. All right, last widget is a Calendly link. So say you want people to go through this thing and then book a call with you to go over it or you're, this is part of your funnel and you want to include a Calendly link for like a discovery call. It's nice that they have this ability to put that link right within um, your app. So I already have just like my 15 minute Calendly thing. I'll, and I'm gonna toss it in here just as an example. Let's see, bloop. All right, so let's look, we have this all here. To edit this subtitle, we actually have to go back. I don't know why we can't, and edit it here. Our first lesson. I don't know why we can't do it from here. It's kind of annoying. Um, but yeah, so if I wanted to rearrange any of these things, you can. You just grab it here in the middle between the two arrows and drag, or you can just hit the down and you can kind of reshuffle things how you want. So this all looks good. Um, notice up here this toggle is in edit mode and we're clicked on the desktop version. So we can click mobile to kind of get a sense of what it's all gonna look like on our mobile. Um, we can also click over to preview mode. Yeah, that'll give you a better sense um, of what it's actually gonna look like with your branding um, all dialed in because when you're still in edit mode, like things kind of still look a little bit like with the passion branding. So be sure to click that. We'll check it in the subdomain and also on the app. All right. so. It's just easier to edit in the desktop mode. So this was the one that was already there for us. If we want to create a new lesson, we're just going to hit that plus sign. Um, our second lesson. Showing a sequence. You can put how long you think it'll take to do it. So maybe this is a 20 minute exercise. If you want the lesson format with all the widgets that I just showed you, you're gonna hit the lesson one again. But what's really cool in Passion is that it has a sequence option. So I'm gonna show you that. So again, we click that to create our sequence. So we can have interactive exercise or timed exercise. So let's start with an interactive one. So let's see, maybe I want to do, this is like a conditioning workout. So I'm gonna say 10 burpees. Uh, I don't know if I have an image, but I do have a playback video. Let me find it. So one thing I'm gonna show you is it is so important to create like a consistent naming system. So for me, these are all of my playback PB um, and all of my um, exercises. So here's my burpee. Oh, it's a half burpee. Here we go, burpee. Um, drag this sucker in. And you don't have to have all of these things. Like I can just keep it as burpee. If you wanted to do an instruction video on how to do a burpee, <laughs> you could, but it works fine just having it like that. Um, so if we had an instruction video, it would play by pushing that. Okay, so from here, you can just continue adding exercises. So I'm gonna add um, let's see 10 banded squat. Uh, 
So the timed interactive exercises are exactly what they sound like. So I'm going to say, okay, I want you to hold a one minute plank for this one. One minute plank. All right, so here, uh, there's no like place to click, which is kind of weird. So you just have to click the plus sign and then the one will show and then you can highlight it to make it 60 seconds. It's kind of weird. Um, for this one, because it's just a, a hold, I will just use the image instead of the video because why do we need a video of just a static? There. All right, so for my one minute plank, it'll show that. All right, so this is something that I had a lot of feedback for. My people would say, okay, this is great, we're doing our workouts, but there's not enough time between, because the one minute plank in the app will just start automatically and people are like oh I just finished my squats and I push next and now I'm like supposed to be in my plank and it takes me some time to get into my plank and then I'm not there for the full minute easy workaround we just create an extra timed exercise that says get ready to plank okay easy and make that like I don't know five seconds, whatever you want. You can even create the image here. The same one, it's already there. You just click it and hit insert. So now that will be within, just put that in the right order. So now after the squats, they'll hit next and it'll say, get ready to plank and then you'll plank. Once this is all set and say you wanted your people to do this twice, we can just hit this little center button which is duplicate. It'll duplicate it right underneath. Hit the arrows because it to go down. All right, and then I'm just going to do the same thing. All right, so this is an example of a sequence. Again, I notice I have a typo here. The place to edit that is here. And I don't think that would be 20 minutes. Maybe it's more like seven. <laughs> Easy peasy. So say I have this all done. Let's see, what are some other features here that we can look at? If we click here, actually let's, this is all of our week one. Um, so let's say for our week two content, we want that to become available a week after people get access to this program. So oh, it's done by lesson, okay. So this lesson is already there. So we'll click lesson drip and we'll say, okay, you get access to that seven days after so hopefully within the first seven days they do this and then this becomes available. Something cool is if you put a lot of effort into something and you're just kind of swapping out exercises, you can just clone the entire thing, right? And then you can just edit bits of it. That saves a lot of time. So say you have finished your whole lesson, you're happy with it. You're gonna hit publish. Don't be afraid. You can always delete it. Like I'm not gonna keep this program. And then in the follow-up video, I'll go over how to assign pricing. Put the link in the description if you want more information about passion.io. And if you're considering moving your coaching online, I highly recommend it. If you find this video useful, please do use my link. It helps me out and I truly appreciate it. Post your comments below. I hope you found this helpful.